Hello, I'm MG and welcome to the third video of MLOps video series. Thank you so much for watching the first and second video and all the way to the third video. So the previous videos, we started to talk about Azure Machine Learning, Azure DevOps, and we had a very high level and quick walkthrough about these two services. For this part, we're gonna start a little bit more hands-on on Azure DevOps and let's start to play with some services, create some variables to gradually start our process for having our first pipeline to create our infrastructure. So let's see how we're gonna do that. Welcome back to the MLOP series and here is the third video. So in the previous video or part two, we had a high level introduction very quick about Azure DevOps. We just touched the surface and some of the main component of Azure DevOps. But right now, what we are going to do in this uh, part of the video series, we gonna actually be hands on and start utilizing DevOps. We are going to define our project and create the repo to use it as a version control and source control for, for our code that our developers can push the code there. Something again like a Git, but here is called Azure repos. And then start the process and create our infrastructure. That's the first step we need to do. So you're already familiar with Azure DevOps, but then the question is, what is the project that I'm going to uh, utilize here? So the project that we have defined is a kind of insurance company data set that actually we are going to predict whether a policy insurance policy holder will claim a file or not so that's a kind of yes or no classification problem we are going to tackle and in the description of the video i have already provided a github link if you just click on it you will see i have added the sample data set that we're going to use to train a model it's coming from a kaggle i'm going to show you and uh, we have some data sets regarding the deployment environment. I told you quickly in the first video in Azure Machine Learning. Remember, I told you we need to have our environment being created to deploy, to track that. How are we going to score the model? How are we going to load the model? What kind of deployment configurations we need for staging, production? So they're all being there and we can leverage those YAML files inside DevOps and make that automated process. The same thing for the package requirement. We have some unit tests to make sure we test the code, we test the data, and we train the model. We have some training codes and some high level introduction about MLOps. And I have already quickly mentioned that, but we're going to come back and discuss them further when we are actually doing the MLOps pipeline in hands on. So let's back to the Azure DevOps. And as you can see, I have a multiple projects already be created. Probably for you, that's going to be empty if, if this is the first time that you're creating a project in your organization. So let's consider the same and start my project. So what I'm going to do, I will click on new project. And here I can add a project name. You can choose whatever you want. I have already typed that before to save the time for the video recording. And let's say I'm going to call it MLOps workshop number one. And you can add here some description about uh, the project and you can decide whether you're gonna make it enterprise, private or public. And the differences between each has been already being uh, mentioned here. Let's say for now, I want to make it as private and click on create. Awesome, the project is now created. And if we go to the repo part, you will see that there's an empty repo already created with the name of my project. And this is what I was talking about. This is something like your Git. As a source control, you can have your developed solutions and codes, push your codes there and then do a pull request and someone gonna approve and then it will go to let's say master branch. So this is actually your repo that you can consider as a Git, for example. And of course you can use Git with Azure DevOps, but here repo we are utilizing for this MLOps series. And this is empty, I know, because we haven't developed anything yet. Just to quickly show you, one of the places that I can develop my code is my machine, my laptop, my PC. And I told you there's a way that I can use my favorite IDE that I am using on my machine, 
but let my code be executed on cloud using Azure Machine Learning Compute. For example, the Git that I showed you, I have already created them here in my, my machine. And let's say I have developed those codes and requirements and testing, training the codes inside my laptop. And then I have did the, I'm going to actually do a pull request to move the data to this repository here and start that development process. Perfect. Before going further, now Azure DevOps need to be connected to my uh, Azure subscription. Remember I show you this Azure Machine Learning and this Azure portal that I just show you. So here I have already entered my credentials and I have a subscription in my Azure portal. But when I go to Azure DevOps, also here this Azure DevOps as a tool, it needs to be authenticated and be connected to my Azure subscription. And the question is why they need to be connected? Well, because what we're going to do, we use Azure DevOps as an orchestrator to do those development lifecycle. For example, Azure DevOps will be connected to Azure Machine Learning to actually deploy the model or test the model, train the model. So that authentication and connection should be created. So before doing any pipelining, any kind of DevOps process, we need to make that connection. For doing so, we go to project setting, and then we can see the service connection as I'm, um, I'm showing that with my pointer. And I, there's no service connection. Makes sense. The project is fairly new. We just created. So I click on service connection. And here is a list of different connections that I can create. We can, I, I told you we can also have GitHub. That's already here. But what we're going to do, we're going to connect to our Azure subscription and the resources that we have there. When I'm saying resources, for example, Azure Machine Learning is a resource in my Azure subscription. And then I click on next. Let's choose the automated process. You can make it manual with service principle that can be a separate uh, way that we can do, but let's make it simple for now. And with the automated process here, I can choose my subscription and then the resource group. So the subscription that I'm going to actually authenticate is MG. This is the subscription that I have. And this subscription is hosting actually my Azure Machine Learning as a resource and all the project that I'm going to actually develop. And I don't want to choose any resource group because I want to authenticate and connect to the subscription in all. And then in service connection name, I can choose any name that I want. But here I'm just typing and I copy that to save the time. And then I just click on save. So again, let me quickly elaborate on what just happened. So with creating this connection, now my Azure DevOps which you can see here and this project can be actually connected and authenticate to my Azure subscription, which has my Azure Machine Learning Studio as well. So this connection is already being created and why I didn't add any credentials because it used, it used my personal credential as MG. So that's why we chose the automated way to create that connection, which was fairly simple and fast. Okay, so now we have created a connection. What is the next step? What we are going to do as the first step for our DevOps process for machine learning is to make sure that we have the proper infrastructure. For example, this Azure Machine Learning as a resource that we just talked about in the first video is a service and it has some infrastructure behind. And the question is how we can automate creating these resources. So I have already manually created that Azure machine learning inside my Azure subscription, but for having the best practices and actually for disaster recovery, some of the well-known best practices in enterprises is all about making sure that we can also recover and recreate our infrastructure, which is called infrastructure as code or IAAC. And the concept is instead of manually creating that collaborative workspace that we call it Azure Machine Learning Studio. Is there any way that I can code to create this environment? So just in case for any reason, if I lose this environment and this resource in my subscription, I'm fine. I have a code that can be automated to create that services that one of them is Azure Machine Learning. So that's what we're going to do. So imagine now we have no Azure Machine Learning Studio and we have nothing in our Azure subscription to actually start that insurance data set and project that we talked about. 
This is something I created called MG Learning to just for myself learn and have an example to show in the first video. But let's say we have nothing and our subscription is empty and we want to create these services in Azure using code. So let's back to the DevOps and now I am it can be connected to my Azure portal. Perfect. So my subscription can be authenticated and now I am ready to start creating that infrastructure. For creating an infrastructure, there are so many variables you need to have. For example, if I'm going to create an Azure machine learning, I need to have a name, a proper name for that. Here, for example, I have called MG learning. So is there any way that I can have those name as a variable inside my code to make sure I have full flexibility? And the answer is yes. And this is exactly what we are going to do now. So this infrastructure as a code that I talked to you about it, we are going to create a pipeline to create that Azure machine learning services and everything that we're going to deal for the MLOps journey. So I will go to pipeline and as you can see quickly, uh, it's a little bit slow. Let me click on that again. So in the pipeline, I have something called library. So I, I will create that infrastructure as a code pipeline quickly, but before I need to define those variables that I talked about it. So if I go to library and in the variable groups, I can create a new one. Again, I can just click on the plus sign here and let's call it a name. And actually I have already written the name. So I will just copy that and paste it here. Oops, sorry. So MLOps uh, workshop, I don't know, variable group VG. So this is my variable group name. So you can have multiple variable group and you can distinguish them with the name that you're choosing here. And then in each variable group, I can start to define my variables. Sometimes these variables are secrets, some passwords, some credential information. So you don't want to add them here and let everyone see. That's how you can also get those variables from Azure Key Vault. So Azure Key Vault is a service that can host your secrets and you just call them instead of revealing your password, you will retrieve them from Azure Key Vault. So no one gonna see your credentials here. But for now, we don't have any secrets, so I don't wanna use it. Let's click on add and start creating my first variable. So what is the first variable here I'm going to create? The first thing that I'm going to create is the base name. So what is base name? Let me get back to Azure Machine Learning and show you better. Remember I told you that this is the name of my Azure Machine Learning resource that I created before? We're going to create something similar for our MLOps, right? We assume that this doesn't exist. Uh, as you can see, the base name here is something that can let me know what is the project that I am working on, a way that I can distinguish that resource from other Azure machine services that maybe my organization is using them. So there are some naming conventions and best practices how you name your services. But for now, let's park that conversation aside and just focus on what is the base name. Let's say I want to have AML Azure Machine Learning 01, Azure Machine Learning 02, Azure Machine Learning 03. As you can see, AML is being repeated. So AML can be a base name and then the rest can be the numbers that are, are changing. So here for the best name, I'm base name, I'm going to choose the name of the project that I have. And let's say I want to call it MLOps workshop number one or something and maximum should be just 10 characters. So let's get back to uh, DevOps. And when I'm done with creating those infrastructure, it will make more sense that how we're using this variable. So don't worry if it's, it's not hundred percent clear for you. We will see that shortly. So I have a variable called base name and I'm going to use that to name my resource that I'm going to create. For example, Azure machine learning, you will see that name being appeared in the name of my uh, Azure machine learning service. Okay. Let's create the next one. And what is the next one? Well, my resource or Azure Machine Learning Studio will be created in a location. Remember those computes that I was creating? I told you it can be a CPU, it can be a GPU. There are some infrastructures that are already deployed physically in the location and Azure has multiple locations that you can use. But here, let's say based on, for example, the location that you have, it can be different, but I gonna choose Central US. It can be Canada or any places and let me actually put the uh, variable name as well, which is location. And then the next one will be, will be the, the resource group name. 
as you know, each service that we are creating in Azure is already inside the resource group. This resource group, as you can guess from the name, can help us to isolate the resources that we are going to create in Azure Portal. For example, let's say I have three environment. The first one is development, staging, and production environment. And we don't want to use the same Azure Machine Learning Studio for development and the same for the production. So we create, for example, two or three different Azure Machine Learning Studio or workspaces, one for dev, one for staging, one for production. So I need to know which resource group that I need to create that infrastructure as a code and I start to create my resources. Uh, for now, let's make it just one. Again, just make it simple. We want to understand the flow, not the details of that, but just for, for your information, I'm, I'm trying to explain a little bit more on what is the concept behind these variables. And again, these names can be everything I've just created. Uh, I, I, I actually wrote them before. I'm just copying them to save the time. And then the next thing, my Azure Machine Learning going to have a name. And my worker Swiss name would be, again, something that you're going to choose. But here I am choosing MLOps Workshop WSH AML Azure Machine Learning and just a number. The next thing is my Azure service connection remember i told you that we already created a service connection in project setting to be connected to my uh azure portal well i gonna use that to create these services right so my devops need to be authenticated to my azure subscription so i need to call that and i want to call it as a variable so I, this is the name that i've chosen and remember this was the value we chose when we created that service connection in project setting and the last variable so we don't have the azure machine learning service created yet the one that we're going to use for this project uh, but when it is created we need to also be authenticated from azure devops to azure machine learning studio so we need to also have another connection for that the same thing that we have for our subscription so we don't want to use it for now but let's add it as soon as we create a workspace of azure machine learning we're gonna need to be connected to that through devops and so let's create it for now this is the variable name and this is the value i'm just pasting that here awesome so we're gonna use this value when we are creating that connection the same place from project setting this time to azure machine learning studio awesome so i'm for now i'm done with the variables that i need at least for the infrastructure as a code part and i will be ready to start my pipeline so before doing so let's click on save and for now let's pause here and we're gonna do do a quick recap on what we have discussed and for the next video we are going to create our infrastructure as a code pipeline to create that azure machine service and all the environment that we have but now we have a pipeline that has a code create an infrastructure for us and we are following devops best practices even for machine learning thank you and we're gonna see you in the next video perfect now we have a better understanding about azure devops and we started to utilize some of the capabilities and settings and configurations in azure devops for the fourth video we are going to now utilize these configurations that we did in azure devops to actually start to create our first automated pipeline which is my infrastructure as a code, which is a pipeline to create my resources that I need for my MLOps journey. So stay tuned and we're going to see each other in the fourth video.